In number one, we're given the uh, number of coulombs in a bolt of lightning, and we have to convert to electrons. So we can just use our electrons to coulombs conversion factor here. Don't forget we're dividing, we're not multiplying. Here we have to use our um, electric force equation, kqq over r squared. Don't forget that k is a constant. It's always 9 times 10 to the 9th. And then in this case, both of our charges are identical because it says we have two electrons. We have to know the charge of an electron. And then on the bottom, the radius. Um, the radius means the distance between uh, the two things. So let me, let me stop here for a second. I want to circle um, the radius down there. We're not talking about the radius as in like half of the diameter of a circle. In this case, radius just means the distance between two charge objects. That's all that is. So you can think of it as a D. Um, it's pretty much, in this case, R is equivalent to D. And then they're on the bottom, um, away from each other. That's because these are two electrons, so they're both negative. So in order to get the direction, the away from or the towards, you don't have to look at any of your math. You just have to think about the two charges. If they're both negative, they're going to propel each other. In this case, we have a positive charge and a negative charge. So because they are opposite charges, they're going to attract, so the direction would be towards each other. We are given the force here, we're given the charges, we're solving for r squared. I saw a lot of math errors on this one in class. Um, make sure that you are taking the square root at the end. A common error in this question was the microcoulombs. That little Greek u means times 10 to the negative 6. And don't forget to put your centimeters into meters. And don't forget to square the denominator. And we're solving for Q. I just wrote it as an uppercase Q just to, to make it more interesting. Sometimes my lowercase Qs look like nines. But anyway. All right, pretty straightforward. So we found the electric field, no big deal. But what about the direction? How did it get to the left? Well, remember, electric field is always positive to negative. It's just a convention, always positive to negative. So you can't think of it as left to right, you can't think of it as up to down, because it's always going to change. So in the question, it said a negative charge moves to the right. So that's what I drew up in yellow, a negative charge moving to the right. That must mean that positive is on the right and negative is on the left. Now you've got to think about what direction is the field. Well, if the field is positive to negative, then the field must be from right to left, or just to the left. We cross multiply and we get our force here. How did I know it was south? In the question, it says the field is directed south. The field is always positive to negative, so if it's directed south, that means that it's positive to negative pointing down. 
and we are given a positive charge, which means that the force, which means that it's going to be going down. It's going to, if it's positive, it's going to be towards the negative, which in this case is down. So again, you can't think of it as as up and down, right, left, because every every question is going to be different. Just remember, the field force is always written positive to negative. So if this is a positive force, then it's going to be going down. All right. So how did I know that that's the force to use here? Well, they're giving you the force of gravity. They're saying it, it weighs uh, this, this certain amount. It says it weighs 2.1 times 10 to the negative third newtons. Remember, that is, that is a force of gravity. That's your Fg. But if we're going to balance something in midair, that means that your force of gravity is going to equal your force of electricity. So you have to picture that negative thing suspended in the air there. Um, and again, we're given the direction of the electric field here. In the problem, it says a downward electric field. That means that it goes positive to negative in the down direction. Um, so we must have a negative charge if it's going to float there. One more time, we know the electric field goes um, positive to negative up to down because it says so in the problem. So if you're going to float a charge halfway there, it can't be positive, otherwise it would go down. So you have to make it negative so it, so it floats. So that's why I put a negative in front of my 3.2 there. All right, we have to do a, one little substitution here. Uh, we don't have the equation that we want immediately, but we can substitute kqq over r squared into our top equation. The q's cancel out, and we have this very handy equation, e equals kq over r squared and we can use that to find the answer to this problem. If you double the denominator, it's squared, so it's really going to turn into a 4, right? So it's going to be 1 fourth times your original value. So if you double the distance because of the squared, the electric field uh, is going to decrease by a factor of 4. So if you actually do the math, you can just do 1 fourth times what you got before and see what that is. We're going to go ahead and use the same derived equation that we got in number five to answer this question. To answer this question, this is a very uh, useful derived equation. Don't forget to square the bottom, and we got our Q. And one more time, let's use that same derived formula to answer this one, too. Moving on, this is uh, the next section. Let's speed this up a little bit. <clears throat> We're going to use this one, just a quick uh, plug in and go. No big deal. Mr. Snyder, call 117, please. Plug and divide, one step.
another one step equation. Don't forget the unit for work is joules. You need to know the charge of an electron for this one. Now here we got a proton. Well, the charge of a proton is the same as an electron. Remember in chemistry, the protons and the electrons cancel each other out? That's because they have the same exact charge. We're going to need to derive an equation for ourselves here, sort of. We can take the two equations that I gave you for electric potential difference, delta V, and then set those equal to each other. And then that gives us everything we need. We can plug in, cross multiply, and solve for the work. Uh, don't forget your um, you have to put centimeters into meters here as well. Here again, we, we're given the force of gravity. Um, anytime we see the word weight, we know that's a force of gravity, which in this case we need to equal the force of electricity if we want something to float in midair. So given force the electric field and Q, we can just use our uh, equation there to find the Q. Now the second part of the question is in essence asking how many electrons are we carrying. So normally an oil drop would have zero excess electrons. It would have a net charge of zero. But right now it doesn't have a net charge of zero. The net charge on our oil drop is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So, how many electrons is that? Well, we can divide that number by the charge of one electron, and you can see that we have two extra electrons on that oil drop. Similarly, here it says an oil drop carries one excess electron, so we can assume that the charge of that oil drop will just be the charge of one electron, 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So we can plug that into our formula and solve for the electric field strength. I hope that this was helpful.